technology. Um, we're going to go through the first entrance today, and <clears throat> this is um, um, uh, this is my favourite throw or takedown or sacrifice throw or sweep. Um, I did this for years and years and years, and um, it got to the stage that um, it became predictable on it, so I changed it up a little bit. I, I don't do this anymore. I, I, I've changed the game uh, quite a fair bit, mainly because the level changed and um, competing outside of Australia, there's a lot of really high level guys, like in the Masters Gear world, sometimes you're up against seven screw black bolts and all that, and they're quite, they're quite in intellectual about your grips and what you're going to do on that. So um, I'm not saying this doesn't work. Um, I, I, I did this for uh, at black belt for a lot of tournaments. I've won a lot of tournaments just for this movement from here. So we are going to do it from standing, but I find it's easier just to actually teach this from the, from the ground and then we can move it to a standing position. So once everyone understands what we're doing, it's easy to do. Uh, Ian, come over. <coughs> so over here, you're going to be on your, uh, I'm going to move you over here. You've got on your knees, easy peasy. So the first part about it is uh, I want to get my, my major grips and um, I do want to kind of get a grip on, on the elbow. I, I can go either under or over, it's kind of irrelevant at this stage here, but we're going to have the feet on the inside. Right? I need to do two motions. First of all, is I'm going to break my partner's balance by sliding slightly to my right side and retracting my right knee to my chest. Put my right knee out, come to my top position. I keep the left hand inside the collar. Right. This is going to be the precursor for the arm bar and the choke. So this one's I really need, I don't care about this hand here, right, well, I do care about, but it's not as important, but this hand here, has to have the control. Okay. So again, so Ian's onto his feet. We're going to play from the butterfly guard, right? So both feet on the inside. What I find for me is um, to get the sleeve grip. And it's how I try and get the sleeve elbow grip. Now, my partner can kind of play the game with grip break. So if I start to put tension, it's easier because it's coming forward. I get the grip. Okay, so watch. My knee comes to my chest. I come to the outside, put my foot here. Dig the elbow to my knee. So it's hard for him to push. Pull forward. Lift my leg. Now, see my foot? I lift my foot up so my knee hits the ground if he tries to capture the half guard. So don't slice it where your foot's going to be like going straight through into the half guard position. Make sure that you lift your foot and swap the fly to the outside and then come back in. And again. Very good, buddy. Uh, does not have to be deep but keep it you know, as deep as you can get it. Number one is, so this controls the posture. The really good thing about the um, collar grip from the butterfly guard, it makes it hard for him to stand up. Where if I get the sleeve grip, there's nothing to stop him from standing, which, which is a harder to control for me. So two hands, a little bit of a pull, get my grips from here. So I slide to my right at the same time, bring my right knee, I just block it. So that means that it's hard for him to move because I've put a trap underneath it. My hook goes under, I'll pull forward. All his weight goes onto the knee, sweep. My knee hits the ground first. I keep my foot elevated. He might try to catch the half guard. Are right, ready? Foot swats in and bring your feet underneath. Don't leave your feet wide. Bring your feet in. All your weight's on your hand and the forearm is running through the shoulder blade, which gives the exact reaction that Ian's doing now, where he'll try and push. Because all my weight's here, it's very hard for him to roll me that way. And if he tries to bridge and roll me the opposite way, my weight's on the opposite side. Um, it is our uh, fingers in grip, because it's a uh, pulling motion to pull them onto me. It's not a thumb in grip, which is a pushing motion to push them away. Okay, one, two, three. It's okay, butterfly guard. So once again, there's a couple of things, and um, this is generic for most sweeps and things, and people misunderstand this, is when we're here, I've got the control, and I said it, it, it doesn't have to be super deep, but, but as deep as you can. We have the control, I'm feeling good. One of the things I see people fail with the sweep is that they go to the right hand side, they're here, and they'll pull their partner onto them, but their back goes on the ground. So this is a really hard mechanic for me to be able to sweep my, my, my partner. Very easy for my partner to start to initiate the uh, guard pass. My back's on the ground, don't have anything to do. So what I've found for me is on this one here is, if I put my uh, elbow on the ground and tap my knee to here, it's pretty much already done, like the sweep's already done. So what I see people do is they kind of go, I bring my knee to my chest and they bring their knee to the chest and they go here. 
So instead, if we kind of go, I'll put my elbow on the ground, bring my knee to my chest, and I can almost like scissor sweep motion to tap my partner over. I, I don't have to tap the knee, but if, they're, if they've got a good base, it's important to be able to do that. The second thing about it is elbow to the ground, knee to chest, I have the ability to kick it as well. So I can either lock it, tap it, or kick it. Uh, you know, like, like it, it's your choice, but I have to be on my side. Secondly, is this, think about it this way, right? I want my partner's weight off his knees. So the reason why I have this mechanic is that I'll pull my bicep to me, which makes it really easy to sweep my partner. So I'm not, I'm not trying to throw my partner over the side. I try and take all his weight off his knees, which makes his knees easier for me to manipulate. And it sounds counterintuitive because I've just said, get off your back. You know, don't make sure their weight's on you. But by the time I've tapped my knee, my body's on the side, so there's, they're falling into the valley or the space that I've created. And again, yeah. So we are going to mount. No, those demos, I didn't go to mount, but that was just bad coaching. Okay, so grip here, pull, control, elbow to the ground, knee, pull forward, boom. Knee comes high, feet come high, switch, and here. First things first, think about this way, says, I put all my weight onto my elbow, not my hand. Because if my weight's here, my weight's going forward, it's easier for him to bridge and roll. But if I go here, I put my weight down. So if he tries to bridge, his head's off the ground. So I don't want to be, I don't want my weight here now. I want it here. I want out my elbow through his chest. And just give him a second to see what he, what he tries to do. Elbow comes over and finish your choke. Don't put your hand in. Why? Yeah, look, if I'm here, what's to stop him from bridge and rolling me? Elbow goes down, bridge and roll. So he's turning into the choke. Okay, turn your thumb up and choke. Thumb down, it's a weak mechanic. Thumb up, stronger mechanic. I have zero idea why. One, two, three. Go and go. Oh, no, because you're... Back yourself from out. Back yourself. Like, I've never, ever gone to mount anyone. They're like, oh, man, thank God you're on mount. You know, to, 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 you know, like, I mean, like, every single person I get to mount, they're like panic stations. The general rule is before they stabilise three seconds, you've got, like, a get out of jail free card. That don't get points. You've got three seconds to go spazzy white belt, sorry, to try and get out of mount without giving a submission up. So for me, the most critical part about when I go to mount is to stabilize the mount. I'm not gonna hunt the submission straight away. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go weather that storm, but I'm gonna put myself in a position that when I come to finish the move, it's on. Okay, so second thing about it for me is this, and if I'm on mount and the person's bigger than me, better than me, and they're gonna roll, they're gonna to go to my guard. They're going from mount, which is a really bad position, into my guard, which is technically a really bad position. So as long as they're not catching me in half guard and rolling me, getting the sweep points and things, if I can go to mount to guard, I'm happy with that transition. Especially if I've gone, you know, like take down guard past mount, seven point, they roll me over, I've won the fight. I just have to keep them inside my guard so I don't lose it. I have to be active enough so that the referee kind of goes, okay, you're still being active. You know, one thing says active with your hands, don't open your legs. Okay, this is the system I play and uh, we're going to run this out for a little bit. Uh, well, Hamish, come here, buddy, on your back. Okay. <clears throat> uh, can I have your head facing the camera, please? Okay, a little bit of detail. So let's have a look at this. First of all, guys, is my hands in, I'm feeling pretty good. Anytime my weight's in my hands, I'm going to get rolled because my weight's forward. So I do like to drop the elbow <laughs> in. Secondly, it says, if I put my hand down, my elbow is running towards the headline, which means I'm going towards the, the jawline and my shoulder's over. If I put my hand this way, I'm running through the carotid. So my second hand should always be like, like this way, so I'm driving through the neck, not through the head. So I have a post, I don't have a post. Okay, so here. Now, my partner's really stubborn, so I replace my hand with my head. I back elbow, I'm lifting my weight up some bit. I back elbow my partner's jaw, 
my hand goes in and I now complete my choke. Right, come around this side, everyone, it's easier to see. So, here, elbow, hand, and I'm trying to squeeze like, man, this guy's super tough. So first of all, my head goes down. I back elbow through the jawline, clench your fist. I go to my cross collar choke from here. Just grip on the outside, I'm sorry Hamish. Just grip on the outside, elbows come into my space and squeeze and the choke's on. So for me, no brainer, no brainer. If my partner is bigger than me and they happen to bridge and roll me over, I'm gonna do exactly the same system. So don't change, just keep, just follow the game plan. Here, as we're going, ah, he goes, Hamish goes, aha, bridge and roll, like, bam, boom. Hand comes over the top, squeeze. <clears throat> this choke is so fast, it's stupidly fast. And Hamish is tough, man, he's a brown belt. Mm -hmm. okay. So, don't change the game. Here, he bridge and rolls, bump from here, watch. Back elbow over. Grab, so hold it here. Now just slide. There's your choke. But it's it's one of the fastest chokes you're gonna get, but set up from out. So if I'm with someone bigger than me, I'll set this up. I won't try and choke them from out. I'll, I'll set this bridge and roll up so that when they bridge and roll me, they're bridge and roll me into the choke. You know what I mean? Jump on, let's have a shot, choking you. Come here. <clears throat> so we're the same size. You know, it's, it's not not so bad, not so bad. Okay, so smart side, you have a fraction. Okay, so once again, this is right. Hand in the collar. Number one, anytime the white's forward, you've got space to bridge and roll me. This is far better for you. So it's elbow down. And I, yeah, I, I try, and if I can pin the arm, that's a bonus. And top my hands this way, I'm going through the jawline, which means I'm not choking. This way, I'm going through the neck and the crotter, which is good, but also gives me a post. So, as I'm trying to post, he pushes my hips, bridge and rolls, pop, come over. So first thing he says, grip as far across the body, onto the belt as you can. Put my top elbow to the ground, and roll to my hips. Okay, change partners, one, two, three. <laughs> This is zero, that's 5%. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying, like, like, as far as chokes go, one of the most underrated chokes you ever going to get. Yeah. So, the principle behind it once again is um, uh, grip, step aside, which gives me better penetration because I want to get my uh, fingers in from here. Um, so, I'm kind of almost like, she goes so hard that I can come over the top. There's, there's a way that we can get the hand away from the body as well. Okay. To get the feet the way that I want the feet is I step back, don't give a slow pull, don't bring my partner in so they consolidate their base. Okay, we'll give a head wobble, boom. Now, step out, so what I'm doing is I'm kind of stepping like I'm foot sweeping, but instead I'm going to drop my right hip to the ground, I'm going to bring my elbows in. Here, elbows in, and walk. Now, your uh, hook knee, which is your right knee, has to be facing the ceiling. And your hook knees, here, they're going to crush it because you're pulling the weight forward. So it's almost like the frame system. So if I get to my hook and it tries to come forward, I've got this ability to kick the frame. So what I'm seeing some of the guys you're turning here already, if you're on the wrong hook, they're going to pass it down. So make sure that your right knee or, or the, the um, left knee, yeah, that right knee, left knee. This one, bad, it is facing up. This means that when I pull forward, I can elevate my partner gets a really nice mouth position and come up. Okay. So the, the, the principle is if your knee's not facing the ceiling, they've got to be able to just fall or go around. So just make sure that's all. Okay, one, two, three. Yeah. And why do you? And um, I'm just going to grab the end again on the butterfly. Uh, so sit down. And um, so I've got my grip from here, got my sleeve grip from here, drop my elbow to the ground, bring my leg out, and the end's got a really good base. So as I'm trying to sweep him, I'm having a lot of trouble, like I'm having so much trouble. So think about this way, you see, right, is 
invest a little bit of time getting this where it needs to be. I understand that right now my uh, forearm is running above the jawline. So I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna bring my knee in, I'm gonna pull my elbow to my hip. Just get my choke. So I'm doing exactly the same track system. So even if I can't get my sweep system going, I'm gonna do the exact same track. The most common response I get this is people just gator roll, try and gator roll out of it so you can end up with the mouth position and the choke anyway. Right. So it's the same deal. So I'm in, playing in my seated butterfly guard and I tap my elbow to the ground, bring my knee chest go, and here's like, like yeah, really good. So if my, if my hands on the jawline, I bring my elbow to my belt. If my hands underneath the jawline, I bring my elbow to my belt. It doesn't matter. So what happens is when I come through, I get to lasso over the top. And the most common response is I just put the choke on. Most people are just gonna go, man, I'm getting choked, I'll roll. That way, the choke's on. So we roll the opposite way. So just take them out. Now, now from here, take them out. Take Tom's too. Yeah, so, you know, <clears throat> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna end up finishing the part. Um, most of the time, the choke will be on before they're on. So, uh, come back again. So just, I want you guys to, to like, um, one thing that I, that I see happens a little bit is that people underestimate the control and the power that they have on their uh, opponent. Like, this is on. This choke is on. And, you know, the amount of times I've seen people that here, uh, young, but are like, oh man, so I'll a ball and I'll try and move. Like, you know, you, you're giving up a really good position and you're giving space away, which, which is good for me. So I can't do it, so push the hand, my suit. Now, even if my partner now is at a distance and I haven't got my guard, put the weight into the top of the head, just pull. You're still gonna get the choke. So for me, this is one of the most underrated chokes uh, from mount and guard. And um, just as a side note, like this is completely irrelevant. Right, so. Any time I have this and I might grip fight, my partner goes inside, pushes down. I got a man, he starts to pass the guard. Okay, we'll track your arm, come over the top, and we'll track it from the top. So track. So, <clears throat> they'll pass, as long as I've got the, the, the control hand, I'll still be able to get this choke, even if they pass the guard. Right. Worst comes to worst is the only way, well, one major way to stop is to back out to where you were. I get my guard back, but I don't get anything. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll just have a look at the first variation, which is we go for our sweep. So from here, the control, go to sweep, miss the sweep, elbow to my belt, come over the top, choke. For argument's sake, pull my leg out, cross it, let my partner pass the guard choke off the guard pass as well. One, two, three. Okay. Change partners.